What's going on everyone? Mike Cadlick, Taylor Kyle is here for CLNS Media outside of Gillette Stadium after the Patriots just wrapped up day six of their 2024 training camp. A reminder, we are powered by Game Time. Head over to Game Time, use code CLNS for $20 off your, your first purchase. Terms apply. Let's talk about the wide receivers, Taylor. Um, in an up and down camp, we talk about the wide or the quarterbacks rather all the time with up and down. I think there's been some up and downs with the wide receiver room. Um, we're gonna get into all that, but first, quickly, uh, some news and notes and sort of an attendance uh, attendance note from the wide receiver room. Demario Douglas, number three, Pop Douglas, uh, comes out here for the first time this summer in a non-contact uh, red jersey. He's been dealing with a hand injury, um, and so he comes out here. And originally, I thought that it was sort of a um, a hint that we might see a lot more of him that you know he hasn't been participating in 11s he hasn't been participating in seven on sevens where now okay you get him out here he's ready to he's ready to go out there but you just can't touch him don't yeah. touch the guy but we didn't really see that some sporadic participation from him um, but what do you make of him being out here actually in the red non-contact and what you saw from his reps today yeah so Sean Wade has been practicing in a red non-contact right. usually if you have the red jersey it's because you are participating and they want to make sure that you don't get you know hurt in a way that's just going to exacerbate whatever you're dealing with so I kind of figured we would see more of him I only think he got like three reps yeah. at least that I noticed it wasn't a heavy involvement but one it was nice catch first... from Drake May which I did like exactly yeah touchdown in red zone work on looked like a quick out or a flat or something like that so Demario Douglas made his presence felt pretty quickly yeah I'll also say he's really only been participating for the most part in training camp in position drills things early on even when he was just going against air you saw like full extension high pointing the ball consistently I think he had like four or five targets yeah where he truly attacked the ball just kind of a reminder that Pop is one of the guys that's really, truly different in this receiving core. Usually we say that about the younger guys, but Pop, although he is young, feels like somebody who could step up as one of the leaders in this receiving core. So that was good to see, you know, some involvement from Pop after only really seeing him in the early part of practices. We got some more one-on-ones today as well. Um, and I thought the young receiver specifically really flashed early. Now, grain of salt, like we always give on, on this show and in our standups, we love the term grain of salt, but uh, one-on-ones, is frankly easier for wide receivers yeah. to win. The cornerbacks don't obviously don't know where they're going, but they don't also don't have any help behind them next to them, things like that. Um, but we saw some flashes. Tyquan Thornton uh, ha runs a nice route and shakes Marco Wilson pretty easily. Jacoby Brissett was fired up. Yeah, uh, that was cool to see. About that one. <laughs> he was and, very vocal. Yeah. I, I didn't even notice at first. I saw Tyquan, I was like, oh, he was wide open. I wonder what happened. Right. And then Jacoby was like, hooting an hour and I'm like oh okay he must have done something really good <laughs> for sure and something I don't think we've seen from the Patriots wide receivers really in the last couple of years is guys winning deep and we saw that yeah. today Kayshawn Booty had a nice catch Jalen Rager's been consistent in, on that front so um, what do you think of that what do you make of what we saw from one-on-ones today and do you think that you know the fact that they're actually making plays deep not dropping the ball bringing the ball in um, is going to have an impact on the offense that they end up running this season absolutely so we were talking about it earlier last season during training camp the only receiver who was consistently making making plays downfield was Devontae Parker. Yep. Like, literally any time there was a deep completion from Mac Jones especially, you could bet your bottom dollar that it was <laughs> Parker on the other end. Obviously, that evaporated right. once the season started. But this year, you're seeing that explosive ability from every receiver that you expect to, you know, contend for a roster spot. Not as much K.J. Osborne, although he did have a beautiful reception on a drop in the bucket from Drake May. Uh, but one guy who really stood out in one-on-ones, uh, Javon Baker. Yeah. Now, he didn't have any receptions because it was a lot. It was windy. Jalen Rager mentioned that there was one pass he had to track kind of funny because there was so much wind on the day. Baker was consistently getting overthrown, but he was open yeah, he was. a lot on deep patterns. I think it was at least five or six that I was able to spot. Um, so that was obviously good to see a guy where, you know, Baker isn't a burner, but he is somebody with his craftiness early on and his build-up speed really can get behind a defense. Jalen Polk was consistently open. We'll touch more on him when we get to the red zone portion yeah. of today's practice, but another guy who got open consistently, I think he had a one drop during those drills, it's the second drop that I've noticed from him uh, this, I think, offseason. I don't think he had any yeah. drops going back to the spring. I could he be definitely wrong. had short hands in the spring. That's for, for sure. sure. That was yeah. kind of my uh, my thing with him is that every time he touched the ball, I feel like there was no ball and just stuck right to his mitts. So. 100%. And that's usually what it is. Like right. He's also been one of the higher volume targets, Jalen Polk, in these practices. So it's going to happen once in a while. You'd like to see it shored up. But, uh, yeah, the young guys really stood out for me. Kayshawn Booty also had a very impressive grab against Marcus Jones, who was right in his hip pocket. Like, yeah. Marcus Jones contested the pass, but another Another drop in the bucket that Kayshawn Booty showed good tracking and concentration to haul in near the sideline. Yeah, I want to stay on Polk for a second, and then we can kind of shift uh, from that into the red zone, and I'll have you talk about the red zone more. But Jalen Polk, he's been my guy. Uh, you saw it on the uh, the bold predictions we did where I said he might yeah. have 1,000 yards this mm -hmm. season. Like He's been consistent, and I know he's had a couple drops, but outside of those two, they're really relying on him. They're using him in those ones groups. There was a, a drill today where they were setting up a field goal, right? And it was, uh, it was basically... 
one play, get it out, line up the ball and get off and get the get the field goals back on. And it was Jacoby Brissett right to Jalen Polk. He yeah. shakes a guy, he gets open, he gets down. He's a good football player, he's a smart football player, and I like that they're relying on him a lot. And then we get into red zone, uh, and he catches two touchdowns pretty easily. He's yeah. been he, he's been comes become sort of one of their red zone targets. He was it he high pointed it over. Was it Marco Wilson? I think. I think so. In the yeah, back it was corner. a really impressive grab where he had to get both of his feet in because he was right in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, and there was another one as well. I forgot who was on that one. I didn't catch it, but uh, quick out against Sean Wade. You. I believe he was in the slot. Not the you know highest difficulty kind of route, but it was cool to see him celebrate because he got in the end zone. He threw the ball up, and the offense celebrated. Right. Was a great day for the offense, so getting the wins where they could, it was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one more note on the red zone before I let you, if you have any more to touch on. Uh, Joe Milton hit Juju Smith-Schuster oh, for yeah. a touchdown down there. It was a really nice throw. He was like a um, sort of like a looky route that was sort of a drag across the back of the end zone, and he shot it in there quickly. Joe Milton also had a backflip out here today. Uh, yes, so we finally got it on video. Yeah, exactly. Check out uh, Mike Cadlick's Twitter account, and you will find it. Yeah, so a uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, who ended up leaving today's practice with an injury, he told us after practice he stepped on a rock and tweaked his leg a little bit, so we'll keep our eyes on that. Um, but catches a touchdown from Joe Milton, so two guys that have had up and down, uh, up and down camp so far, they connect for six. Anything else on the red zone for you? That's it for me. It was a pretty competitive uh, session. Yeah. I kind of mentioned in our quarterback video. Check that out if you haven't. Wasn't a great session for May. Uh, Brissett was inconsistent but did have some nice passes. I think his best was a throw right into a keyhole for Hunter Henry with Joshua Bledsoe right there in coverage. That's it for the wide receiver report. Uh, the young guys starting to impress a little bit more, getting deep, getting open deep downfield. Juju Smith-Schuster, not great on the day. And Jalen Polk continues to impress. So we'll keep an eye on all of it here on Patriots Press Pass. Make sure you rate, review, subscribe, and check out all of our written work over at clnsmedia.com. Make sure to subscribe to Patriots Press Pass for all your Patriots news and updates on YouTube. And for all our written work, make sure you check out clnsmedia.com.